Physiology. So let's begin by the first type of respiration, which is referred to as aerobic respiration. So for this aerobic respiration, we see that this mainly involves the breakdown of food substrate in the presence of oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and energy. That is aerobic respiration. So carbon dioxide, water, and energy. So oxygen is required in order to break down the food substrate to carbon dioxide, water, and energy. So the energy produced is used to make energy-rich compound, which is referred to as the adenosine triphosphate. So this adenosine triphosphate, triphosphate, it means that we have three phosphate group or three phosphate molecules. So the energy produced during uh, aerobic respiration, so it is used to produce the ad adenosine triphosphate. So this, uh, this adenosine triphosphate mainly consists of um, an adenine. After an adenine, it also comprises of an organic base. Uh, after an organic base, also five carbon, uh, five carbon ribose sugar and three phosphate groups. So basically, we have said that the adenosine triphosphate mainly comprises of uh, adenine. After an adenine, it comprises of an organic base, five carbon uh, sugar, which is a ribose sugar, and three phosphate groups. So the adenosine triphosphate is mainly synthesized from the adenosine diphosphate and one inorganic molecule. So as you can look at this diagram, so this diagram basically summarizes the formation of the adenosine triphosphate in making of the three phosphate groups. So for the three phosphate groups, that's, uh, those give us the triphosphate because it means that we have three phosphate molecules. So we have the two adenine and one phosphate molecule in order to get the three phosphate groups, which is now the adenosine triphosphate. So the adenosine triphosphate, you see that it uh, mainly gives a lot of energy, whereby you see that this energy must be released in small quantities in order to prevent burning or destroying of the cells and the tissues because the energy given is very high. We'll see that it comprises of about 38 ATP or more. So this energy is very high, therefore it must be released in small quantities. Why? Because if released in large quantities, all the 38 or so molecules, the cells are going to be destroyed by excess heat or they are going to be destroyed by... Basically, the release of too much energy is going to destroy the cell. So we see that all multicellular organisms and most unicellular organisms, example, some bacteria, uh, also some pathogens, also basically just most of the unicellular organisms, they respire aerobically. So we did not say all unicellular organisms, we did not say all of them, because we see that there are some bacteria which are anaerobes. Anaerobes, it means that they do not use oxygen. If oxygen is provided, they are going to die, they are going to be poisoned. So that's why we have said most of the organisms, most of unicellular organisms, they respire aerobically, while some respire anaerobically. So after that, we see that in anaerobic respiration, glucose is fully broken down to carbon dioxide, water, and energy. That is for aerobic respiration. If oxygen is provided, so glucose will be completely broken down. As you can look at this summary of the equation, we see that glucose is completely broken down in the presence of oxygen and respiratory enzymes to give six molecules of carbon dioxide and water molecule plus energy, whereby now this energy is in form of ATP. So that energy is ATP energy. So during aerobic respiration, oxygen must be present. So if oxygen is present, yes, glucose will be completely broken down. So in the next class, we are going to look at anaerobic respiration, whereby for the anaerobic respiration, we are going to realize that there is no oxygen. So glucose will be broken down in the presence of no oxygen, or rather, glucose will be broken down when oxygen will not be available. So in the anaerobic respiration, we'll see that it will be incompletely broken down to form lactic acid or ethanol plus carbon dioxide ETC. So that is anaerobic. But if oxygen is provided, glucose will be completely broken down uh, to release carbon dioxide, water molecules, and energy, uh, among others. So that is now the importance of 
the oxygen in aerobic respiration to completely break down glucose in order to release maximum energy. So apart from that, we see that this process of respiration occurs in a series of reactions. So this respiration doesn't just occur. You can take glucose, you blow oxygen, and then respiration occurs. No. So this process of respiration, basically, it occurs in a series of chemical reactions. Because remember the definition of respiration is saying that this is the process whereby food is chemically broken down in order to release energy. So it occurs in a series of chemical reactions in the presence of different respiratory enzymes. So by that we see that there are mainly two phases of aerobic respiration, whereby we now involve the different respiratory enzymes for the breakdown of glucose in order to release the energy. So there are mainly two phases of aerobic respiration, whereby the first phase of aerobic respiration, we have glycolysis, some people call it glycolysis. So you have glycolysis, after glycolysis, Glycolysis is, is immediately followed by the Krebs cycle. So we have glycolysis and then the Krebs cycle. So if oxygen is made available, so we undertake the Krebs cycle. So the respiration will follow, um, okay, the glucose or the substrate rather, the substrate is going to be broken down by the use of oxygen. Uh, that is in Krebs cycle. So let's begin with the first one now. The first one is now glycolysis. So what is glycolysis? How does it happen? When does it happen? Where does it happen? So you see that this is mainly the first phase of aerobic respiration that takes place in the cytoplasm of the cell. So that is where it begins. So it begins in the cytoplasm of the cell. So in glycolysis, we see that before glucose can be broken down, it is first activated through addition of energy from ATP and the phosphate groups. So that addition of energy from ATP and the phosphate groups is very much important because it takes us now to the next step of glycolysis. So this process is mainly referred to as phosphorylation, whereby this phosphorylation, we see that it mainly involves the breakdown of glucose molecule into two molecules of, the first one, into two molecules of three carbon compounds called the pyruvate or the pyruvic acid, as we can see. So the pyruvate or the pyruvic acid then the next step is two molecules of ATP. So one molecule of ATP is formed. Remember ATP, it is a three carbon compound. So that is ATP. So the next one is two molecules of ATP will be formed. So the first one, remember we'll say that three carbon uh, compound called the pyruvate or the pyruvic acid will be formed. And then after that, we'll have two molecules of ATP, whereby we have the first molecule of the ATP and then the second molecule of the ATP. So for this, we see that this process does not require oxygen. So don't confuse. So the first phase of uh, aerobic respiration, which is glycolysis, does not require oxygen to take place. As you can see here, we have glucose, glucose which is at six carbon compounds. So we have C6H12O6. So glucose at six carbon compounds in glycolysis is broken down to two, three carbon compounds. So as you can look at the diagram, this is what we mean. Glucose as six carbon compound is broken down to the first three carbon compound, which is the pyruvic acid, and the next uh, three carbon compound, which is the other pyruvic acid. So as you can check, at, if you can look at this now, the summary of the diagram, we see that glucose, when undertaken through glycolysis process in, uh, in when we have enzymes, in the availability of enzymes, rather, uh, rather yes, so if glucose is undertaken through glycolysis in availability of different enzymes, we're going to get pyruvic acid. So if we undertake also this pyruvic acid under different enzymatic uh, conditions, we're going to get ethanol plus carbon dioxide plus energy in plants. So remember, in plants we have ethanol, in animals we have lactic acid. So for the first one, glucose, uh, pyruvic acid, we are going to get ethanol in uh, plants, carbon dioxide plus energy. This energy is very low energy because glucose is being broken down in the absence of oxygen. This, remember again, is the first step of uh, aerobic respiration, which is called glycolysis. So in glycolysis, oxygen is not required in the first step, glycolysis. And that's why in the, in the previous, I say that in the Krebs cycle, oxygen will now be made available. Whereby in the Krebs cycle, this oxygen in Krebs cycle will be responsible to break down the pyruvic acid 
to now form the carbon dioxide, water, and energy. But in glycolysis, oxygen is not required. So for the plants in glycolysis, so uh, glucose is broken down to pyruvic acid in enzyme-controlled activities to form ethanol plus carbon dioxide plus, plus very low energy. So after that, that is plants. What about in animals? So in animals, it's exactly the same, but now we don't form ethanol. So in animals, glucose is broken down in the presence of enzyme-controlled activities to form pyruvic acid. Uh, so this pyruvic acid also will be undertaken through different enzymatic uh, condition or different enzymatic reactions in order to form lactic acid and energy. So take note, in animals, the pyruvic acid is not broken down to lactic acid plus carbon dioxide plus energy. In animals, the pyruvic acid is broken down only to form lactic acid plus energy. So don't confuse. In plants, we say that we are going to form the pyruvic acid is broken down in plants to form pyruvic, uh, to form uh, ethanol, carbon dioxide, and energy. But in, in animals, so the pyruvic acid is broken down to form lactic acid and energy only then then again remember this energy is not much energy it's very low energy because oxygen is not uh, oxygen has not been used therefore glucose has been incompletely broken down so glucose uh, was not completely broken down so energy release will be very low so apart from that we say uh, we see that what happens after pyruvic acid is formed mainly depends on whether oxygen will be made available or not if oxygen is not made available, very low energy will be produced. But if oxygen is made available now in the Krebs cycle, very high energy will be produced. And we'll see that ethanol will be broken down also. And also after, apart from that, we'll see that lactic acid will also be broken down. So after that, we see that if the cells do not get enough oxygen, the pyruvic acid will be partially broken down to lactic acid in animals and the ethanol in plants, as the diagram had shown. So they are going to be in complete bro uh, breakdown. The energy produced will be very low, etc. So now that is glycolysis. That is the process which is referred to as glycolysis. So remember, in glycolysis, glucose is broken down in the absence of oxygen to produce ethanol in plants and lactic acid in animals. So now apart from that, let's now look at now the Krebs cycle. So what is the Krebs cycle? So Krebs cycle is the second phase of aerobic respiration. The first phase of aerobic respiration, remember we say that it is glycolysis. Now, the second phase of aerobic respiration uh, is now the Krebs cycle. So this is the second phase of uh, aerobic respiration. It mainly takes place in the matrix of the mitochondrion. So remember, in glycolysis, we say that it begins in the cytoplasm. But now, the second phase, which is the Krebs cycle, it mainly takes place in the matrix of the mitochondrion. So, unlike glycolysis, no oxygen was required in Krebs cycle. So, oxygen must be used in Krebs cycle. So, it's a must that oxygen to be used in the Krebs cycle. And now, th this gives us now the major difference between glycolysis and the Krebs cycle. So, here, um, oxygen must be used. So, in the Krebs cycle, you see that pyruvic acid from glycolysis is further, uh, is further broken down by the use of oxygen. So, the best time to say that is that pyruvic acid in glycolysis is further oxidized to form energy, carbon dioxide, water, and end products, basically, to form the different end products. So, the pyruvic acid will be broken down in the presence of oxygen. Here now, the pyruvic acid that was obtained from glycolysis will be reacted with oxygen. So if the pyruvic acid is reacted or broken down with oxygen in this place, we are going to get energy, a very high amount of energy by the way. So here we are going to get a very high amount of energy because oxygen is involved, there is complete breakdown. So we're going to get high amount of energy, carbon dioxide and water molecules in Krebs cycle. So as you can look at this summary of the, um, summary of the diagram, we see that Glucose will be broken down to pyruvic acid. Pyruvic acid from glycolysis, remember. So glucose to pyruvic acid, this is, this is glycolysis. That is glycolysis. So if we involve oxygen, whereby now the pyruvic acid will be oxidized. So the pyruvic acid will be oxidized to, to form the acetyl coenzyme A, which will be further oxidized to give energy. 
that is now Krebs cycle. So as soon as or as long as we involve oxygen in the pyruvic acid, so it automatically now ceases to become glycolysis and it becomes now a Krebs cycle because we have involved oxygen. In Krebs cycle, there must be oxygen. The function of the oxygen in the Krebs cycle is to break down the pyruvic acid to form carbon dioxide, to form uh, energy and to form water molecules. So here in this process we see that one molecule of glucose gives 38 molecules of ATP which is a very high amount of energy. So in the previous one, so glucose was incompletely broken down to form ethanol in plants plus water molecules plus 2 ATP energy. So 2 ATP energy that is very low energy. But now here, the pyruvic acid is further oxidized or broken down in the presence of oxygen to form 38 molecules of ATP. So this is a very high amount of energy. So for respiration to take place, the following must be present. So the following must be made available for respiration to take place. So the first one you see that cells must have food or they must have uh, the different respiratory substrate including proteins, carbohydrates, or fats. So for respiration to take place, that is the first step. So the cells must have uh, food. They must have food or the substrate which is uh, supposed to be broken down in order to release energy. So apart from that, we see that for aerobic respiration, oxygen must be present. So oxygen must also be present for a lot of energy or for respiration basically to take place. So apart from that, we also see that Respiratory enzymes must be made available because these respiratory enzymes are the ones responsible for breaking down this food substrate with oxygen to produce energy. And that's why if I take, for example, protein, I put protein in my hand like this, and then I blow oxygen on that protein. Do you think respiration is going to take place? No, respiration is not going to take place. But if I take the protein, I blow oxygen and then I add different respiratory enzymes, respiration is going to take place. So respiratory enzymes are very much important in respiration, so they must be available for respiration process to take place. So apart from that, favorable environmental conditions like temperature and pH must also be made uh, available, must be present for respiration to take place. So those favorable conditions are very important because very high pH are going to destroy the respiratory enzymes. Remember in Form 1 we studied about the different enzymes, whereby we say that factors affecting enzymes, we say that high pH, high temperature, they destroy the different enzymes. Therefore, the environmental conditions, temperature and pH must be favorable for optimum respiration to take place. Too high temperature, too high pH is going to denature or destroy the different enzymes. When the temperatures are very low, the enzymes are going to be inactive. When the pH are very low, that is to the acidic, the enzymes are going to be destroyed. So it is only under optimum environmental conditions that respiration is going to take place. Lastly, we are going to say the different waste products being produced by the cell must be removed immediately because these waste products are going to alter the pH of the cell. If the pH of the cell is altered, either being acidic or basic, this high pH is going to destroy the enzymes. Therefore, respiration is not going to take place. Therefore, all waste products must be immediately removed in order for respiration, optimum respiration to take place. So finally, uh, this is an equation which summarizes the Krebs cycle as you can see. So that is an equation summarizing the Krebs cycle whereby glucose is broken down to form pyruvic acid and then if we introduce oxygen, um, and also different respiratory enzymes are going to get carbon dioxide, water molecules and ATP or adenosine triphosphate energy. So just a recap, remember we say that respiration this is the process whereby uh, food is chemically broken down in order to produce energy. Food is chemically broken down to produce energy. So we say that we have two types of respiration whereby you say that we have aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration. Aerobic respiration, oxygen must be uh, present. Anaerobic respiration, it doesn't require oxygen. So we say that aerobic respiration has two main phases. The first phase we say this glycolysis, which does not require oxygen for the breakdown of glucose. In glycolysis, there's the formation of the pyruvic acid. So the next phase we say that 
it is Krebs cycle. So Krebs cycle, now the pyruvic acid from, from, formed from glycolysis is reacted with oxygen in Krebs cycle to form carbon dioxide water and 38 ATP energy molecules. Biology.